انترستنج اشكر الاخ طارق من سيسكو ميدل ايست طبعا احنا اي اسئله راح تكون في نهايه الجلسه راح يعني اذا احد عنده سؤال حق اي محاضر ممكن يكون في نهايه الجلسه يجمعون الاسئله هذه كلها الحين عندنا في الورشه الثانيه افاق الذكاء الاصطناعي من منظور مايكروسوفت الاخ فارس بو فخر الدين تكنولوجي سوليوشن بروفيشنال فور اول اند بيج داتا مايكروسوفت اتفضل Good afternoon everyone. My name is Firas and I'm the technology solution professional. So what does that mean? So I'm a specialist in the field of AI and big data in Microsoft Dubai, but fortunately and I'm lucky enough to actually be moving to the Kuwait to support Kuwait as a region. Now, innovation is not just a word, it's an action. With artificial intelligence, we are not crawling or walking or running. We are flying today. Microsoft AI helps an architect bring history back to life. He doesn't see data. He sees fragments of our past. This is now. Artificial intelligence helps farmers grow more food with less resources. She's not collecting information. She's feeding a growing population without wrecking the planet. This is real. An engineer explores how AI could help the deaf see sound. She's not looking at obstacles. She's staring down opportunity. Innovation doesn't see the possibility of tomorrow. It creates tomorrow. And are you ready for the headline? Tomorrow is here today. Now I'll give you an example of what we did with AI. So as you can see here, this is one of our coders in Microsoft Corp, and he's actually visually impaired. He was one of the first developers to actually create an application to see, to see the surroundings. As you can see, those who are visually impaired have a lot of mental gaps that they cannot understand what's around them. If they are talking to someone in front of them, how is that person feeling? And with the power of AI, he's able to understand the pe people in front of him. He's able to see how do people interact with him? Are they listening? Are they not? Who's in front of him? Is he talking to someone? And I'll tell you about one of the experiences that I had in Jitex, Dubai. So there is this application called Seeing AI, which is the same application this coder uses. And I've been presenting it for about a year and a half. Now, the, the, there's this person from Saudi. He came to me, and he's like, you changed my life. And I'm like, I don't know you, so we just met. How did I change your life? And he was telling us how this application that he used, which is known as Seeing AI, that you can all download on your iPhones, changed his life. He's able to see the people around him. He's able to understand who's around him. He's able to understand currencies and so on. And what he's doing right now in the Saudi government, he's trying to push this application to support all of the Saudis who are visually impaired. This is really important because AI is giving you the advantage to include people that you've overlooked and overseen. Now, our CEO, actually before that, now, how do you digitally transform? And what is digital transformation? So digital transformation is some form of changing the way we do things. It's the future. Now, how do you go to the future? You have four options, which is engage customers, operations optimization, employees, and transform your product. So now, you're using the power of AI to actually include employees that you've never included before. You've given the voice to those employees who've never been there before. You're changing the way your customers perceive you as a government with the new applications embedded with AI. And here's the new thing. Instead of actually using an application, you're using a chatbot to talk to your customers, to understand your customers better, and you're changing the way your customer perceive you as a government. Now, there are three pillars of AI, if you think of it this way. You have your services, your infrastructures, and tool. Now, think of Azure as a platform. It's simply this Lego, green Lego, that you build your platform on it. You use your different blocks. And these are the services that we provide for AI. So you have your chatbots, in which you communicate with different customers without actually being there or needing to communicate. Cognitive services, in which it mimics the way a human being works. It can see for you. It can compute for you. It can understand for you. It's, it's a different way that we're doing things right now. And then you have your app machine learning. So what, when we did our senses, we understood that our customers do not know how to code. So what we created, we created, Azure, we created Azure machine learning algorithms for them, but we called them cognitive services. So instead of you programming uh, image recognition from scratch, 
you can actually plug and play with it. You can train it yourself, and that's using the cognitive services. Now, if you want to code it from scratch, you would use something called Azure Machine Learning Services. Now, for infrastructure, you have two parts. You have your data, and you have your compute. So AI is a really old term. It's not new, but what happened? So we got your data, and then we got the power of cloud to actually analyze the data. Once we understood that data, we got intelligence. And that intelligence is what's helping companies to actually grow, to utilize their competitive advantage, to understand their customer better. So they would, for example, if you're a government, you're doing uh, paying electricity and so on, you can create a bot instead of, the of sort of a customer actually going there to pay his bill, he can pay it on his phone. It's simplifying the means in which we do things. Now, to do such a thing, you need the tools to actually create something. So we have Visual Studio, which we created as Windows, and then we support open source. So we have different forms of open source machine learning algorithms that you can utilize. Now, what is machine learning? Let's dig deeper. It's actually a sub part of, com uh, of computer science in which you would make the machine learn and understand on its own. Now, but what do you need to actually for machine learning? So you need three things. You need math. You need computer science. And the most important part, you need domain expertise. It's so easy to get a techni technician, but it's so hard to get a person who actually knows the industry as well. And here are, there are different algorithms that actually Microsoft provides you. So you have your classification. You have your regression. You have all of the recommendation engines that you can see on souk.com. You have clustering. So now all of, the impl all of the citizens of Kuwait, you can actually cluster them based on what they prefer, what they like, what they need. And based on that, you will target them. You will understand every citizen, what they like, what they care. And that's a great advantage for a, co a government. Now, I spoke about cognitive services. Again, these are pre-configured algorithms in which we created that you can utilize. So there is the vision, there is speech, language, knowledge, and search if you think of it. So as I'm speaking, in real time, it can translate for you. If, you can't, uh, if the, I'm in front of you presenting, in real time, it's giving you annotations. It's describing who am I as a person. What am I doing? And that's the beauty of cognitive services. You don't actually need to code it. You don't need to be a coder. We want it to democratize AI. We want it to simplify AI. And for that, we created these algorithms for you to utilize. Now, chatbots. Chatbot is one of the biggest trends in the Middle East right now. Every government is asking for chatbots. And the reason for that, chatbots are applications. They're simple applications. But the beauty about these applications, you don't actually need to create it for a different iOS. You would create, usually how you would create an application, you would create one for Windows, one for iPhone, one for Android. Now, instead of doing such a thing with a chatbot, you will create a central application, and you would link it through different channels. And that gives you a, a great advantage, because you don't need to develop the same thing three times. Now, for chatbots, what our main goal was for it to use the human language as the new user interface. We don't want customers to actually press on an application. We want him to talk to it. We don't want customers to actually go through an application and type. We want it to interact with it. We want it to understand you very well. And these are the great advantages of a chatbot. Now, a chatbot can be hard-coded, which is hard-coded, actually. But what you do, you put on top of it a layer of intelligence, and that's the cognitive services. Now, to end my session, which is early, <coughs> perfectly, so here's the thing. When we talk about AI, our mission in Microsoft is to empower every organization and every human being in the world. But when I joined the company, I asked myself this question. How would you empower every organization? Would you empower people in Africa the same way you would empower people in Kuwait? The answer is no. But how can you empower them? And the answer to my question was actually AI. I'll tell you an example of what we're doing currently in Africa. We're working with the government and collaborating with telco companies to actually recommend what seeds to actually uh, f uh, plant in the plantation fields of Africa. And for those people who are actually getting these seeds, they get a discount from the, customer, uh, from the government for that. Now, how is that helping them? It's helping the customer to actually plant something that will give them a lot of yield that they can send and gain more capital. But if you think of it, how will AI actually help the government of Kuwait? Now, think of how society is. Society, we build it on pillars. We build silos. You have your rich, your poor. You have the people who are with disabilities or people without disabilities. Now, what AI can do, it can bridge those gaps between some of those silos that we've created. 
For those people who are without disability, you get the insights of a person with a disability. You get the experience, the knowledge that someone with disability can actually explain to you that you overlooked. Now, governments are being more interactive. They're being more welcoming to actually get more people who are Kuwaiti citizens or Kuwaiti like who lives in Kuwait to actually interact with the government, to get their insight. And this is one wonderful thing that we did in Microsoft. It's working with people with disabilities to actually gain their voice, to gain their insights, to actually do more and support them in their journey. We have so many people who are non-verbal, but still have so much to say. I want the exact same information that my hearing friends have. There are barriers to communication everywhere, but I think it's time we look at the barriers as opportunities to reach out to everyone. Soundscape fills in a lot of the mental map as you move. Approaching intersection. You can just put it in your pocket and go. With ALS, you become locked in, but we see technology as a way to give back what ALS has taken away. There's no better feeling than to hear a child say something that they've wanted to say and the look on their face after they've, they've been able to say it. When it's reading, I see spaces between the words and it's easy to focus on. Andre realized that here was something that could change his life. Now that I have my phone, I can see exactly what was said. And that's been a huge help to me. The system is learning as it goes, and the accuracy has improved tremendously. Students can pick any language that they choose to receive the information. It's like we jumped into the future. Because communication is very important for all of us, and we just want to be together and not feel left out. Aider les personnes avec autisme à communiquer, il y a des images. Je parle, je donne une information à Arthur et elle est traduite par l'application El Picto instantanément en pictogramme et après d'une façon orale. Va t'habiller et te brosser les dents. On va pouvoir remettre en place une communication qui est plus spontanée. Je crois que ça vraiment, ça aide à recréer du lien. Both my wife and I are totally blind, and we have a three-year-old son that's in preschool. He can see, but his parents can't. So to be able to know what's going on at his school is everything. The Seeing AI app has the ability to allow me access to the visual world. Artificial intelligence is beginning to have an impact on the lives of people with disabilities, but it's, it's only going to grow. There is still so much out there uh, to be done. One of the most emotional and one of the most proud videos that we have in Microsoft that I always showcase. It shows you the capabilities of AI and the capabilities of using the power of the cloud to do more. Now, I want you to question, what do you think with that person who's actually visually impaired using, instead of using that application, imagine him holding that server rack on his back to actually do AI. And that's the beauty of cloud. So instead of this guy holding a bag of seven tons on his back just to, do, to see what's in front of him, he's actually utilizing the power of cloud to do more. The cloud is a new term in the Gulf Force, and people are, in a way, scared of it. But I want you to think further than this. It's not, do we want cloud? It's when. Tomorrow will be here today, and cloud is really important for us to actually grow as a company and as a country by itself. So by utilizing the power of cloud, you're being inclusive. By utilizing the power of cloud, you're being more powerful to actually do more. You're doing machine learning algorithms instead of wasting 15 hours and investing hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're doing it in 15 minutes. So the potential is there, and you can do it. We're Microsoft. We don't actually sell you products. We actually build with you solutions. So with that, I would like to thank you all for listening, and I hope it was an insightful session. Thank you. Thank you. شكراً للسيد فراس في عندنا من كواليتي نت جروب هذه موجودين تفضل كواليتي نت جروب المحاضرة الثالثة 
بعنوان إنشاء وتشغيل وتسليم مراكز للأمن السبراني راح يكون فيها ثلاث محاضرين أه بس واحد راح يكون اه اوكي راح يكون فقط غيروا في الجدول مستر شادي العزب مستر شادي هو سينيور سايبر سيكيورتي كونسلتنس كواليتي نت جروب تفضل مستر شادي السلام عليكم يعطيكم العافيه Um, first of all, I want to thank you for your attendance here today. My name is Shadil Azze. I'm the senior cybersecurity consultant on QualityNet. Actually, we have uh, to negotiate today about the next generation of SOC. The SOC is the Security <laughs> Operations Center. As you see here, the first slide we يعني حبينا نبدأ بأول سلايد اللي هو الماريوت ما بعرف إذا سمعتوا بآخر بريتش صار للماريوت هو عملية صارت ستيلينج لإنفورميشن لجست تقريب ال 500 مليون ضيف في الماريوت تم سرقة المعلومات عندهم طبعا للأسف عمليات مثل سرقة كمية 500 مليون من المعلومات تحتاج لوقت كثير كبير وقت بالتحميل وقت بتجهيز الاتاك وقت بالدخول للنتورك وقت بالديسكفرينج والتارجتينج الها هلا الريليشن بين السكيورتي اوبريشن سنتر وبين البريتش اللي بي اللي حصل بالماريوت اللي حابب اوصله انه لو كان في سيت اب مناسب لسكيورتي اوبريشن سنتر كان راح يكون الحدث اقل اتليست ما وصلوا لهاي الدرجه من او الكميه من المعلومات لانه 500 مليون ريكوردز بمعلوماتهم تحتاج لاكثر من سنوات يعني تحتاج لسنتين لثلاث سنين حتى تقدر انك تسوي ابلود لهاي الكمية من المعلومات فالسيكيورتي اوبريشن سنتر كان ممكن انه يسوي ديتكشن للبيهيفير ويسوي ديتكشن للماليشيس اكتيفيتي اللي موجودة بالنتورك اول سلايد راح نحكي فيه التشانل تشالنج اوف سيم سوليوشنز في عدة تحديات بتواجه السيم سوليوشنز احنا بنحكي عن السيم سوليوشنز از ا بارت اوف سوك ذا سكيورتي اوبريشن سنتر هو مش فقط السيم رح نتعرف عليه بالسلايدات لقدام شو مكونات السكيورتي اوبريشن سنتر بس مينلي ذا مين كومبوننت اوف ذا سيم سوليوشن اوف ذا سوك سوليوشن از ذا سيم سوليوشن أول خ... أول تحدي ممكن يواجهه أي شخص حابب إنه يسوي إمبلمنتيشن لسم أون بريمس حيلاقي رونج أوف ميس كونفيجوريشن السكند حيكون الكوستلي أند تايم كونسيومينج تو سيلكت بيلد سيت اب إمبلمنت أوبريت في صعوبة كثيرة لأنه بعملية ربط السم تحتاج لربطها على أكثر من ديفايس وتحتاج لربطها على كامل الانفراستراكشر المشكلة الثالثة واللي جميع الناس بيواجهوها سواء بالسم أو بأي سيكيورتي أبلاينسز وخصوصا الاي بي اسز اللي هي الفولس بوزيتيف الفولس بوزيتيف اللي بتنشأ من أي ديفايس بيطلع التشالنج الرابعة اللي هي الانسفشنت ستافنج اند اكسبنسيف بيبل زي ما بتعرفوا لتشغيل عملية السم تحتاج sufficient staff تحتاج training تحتاج سوك engineers certified وهذا الحكي كمان بصب بنفسه بالنقطة الثانية اللي هي انه costly و time consuming 
بالنقطة الخامسة بنحكي عن الـ lack of standardization in the management process هاد بسبب تنوع الأجهزة والـ network devices والـ security devices اللي بتكون موجودة عندك على الـ network اللي بترتبط على الـ SIM النقطة السادسة الـ policies and development require a lot of time هون حابين نحكي عن الـ traditional SOC definition التراديشنال سوك ديفينيشن اللي هو السوك او السكيورتي اوبريشن سنتر كان هو عباره عن مونيتورنج للاورجنايزيشن نتورك للانترنال نتورك كان هذا تركيزه الوحيد النقطه الثانيه كان عمليه كولكتنج وتحليل لهاد المعطيات او اللوجز اللي عم باخذها النقطة الثالثة بالتراديشنال سوك كان الانسيدنت ريسبونس تيم او الكمبيوتر انسيدنت ريسبونس تيم كان سبرت بيشتغل بشكل منفصل عن السوك بالنكست جينيريشن سوك ديفينيشن بنحكي عن فليكسبل لوج كوليكشن بنحكي عن كونسبت الجميع عم بحكي فيه حاليا اللي هو البيج داتا بروسيسنج نحكي عن ادفانس اناليتكس الادفانس اناليتكس واللي هو اهم عنصر بالنكست جينيريشن سوك اللي هو الادفانس اناليتكس اللي هو لازم يتواجد عندك يوزر بيهافير اند انتيتي مانجمنت سيستم تو اناليز ذا يوزر بيهافير اند ذا انتيتي بيهافير اكوردنج تو ذا بيهافير نوت اكوردنج تو ذا سيجنتشر وريال تايم انتليجنس ريال تايم انتليجنس المقصود فيها لازم يتواجد عندك سوليوشن كان تيك اكشن اميديتلي اكوردنج تو ذا انسيدنت يعني الانسيدنت ريسبونس اللي عم بيصير حاليا في التراديشنال سم او بالتراديشنال سوك بيصير عن طريق السم سوليوشن بتحول من اليرت لسوك تيم بلاير 1 ولاير 2 ولاير 3 ليتعاملوا مع الحدث بس حاليا في نيو سم او نيكست جينيريشن سم عم تقدر تتعامل مع الانسيدنت بشكل الي وبتقدر تاخذ الاكشن المناسب وتعطي الاوامر المناسبه لجميع السكيورتي ديفايسز الموجوده على النتورك هون بدنا نحكي عن المين نيكست جينيريشن سوك كومبوننت لتكوين اي سوك سنتر وهي كمان من التشالنجز لتكوين اي نيكست جينيريشن سوك يو هاف يعني يو شود هاف ذا فولوينج كومبوننت اول شيء اللي هي الهيومن ريسورس الهيومن ريسورس احنا بنحكي بسكيورتي اوبريشن انجينيرز بنحكي بفورنزك انفستيجيتر محققين بالجرائم الالكترونيه حتى يعرفوا الانسيدنت ومن وين حدثه ووين الويكنس بوينت اللي في النتورك او خارج النتورك اللي ادت للحدث يعني حيكون في عندك انسيدنت ريسبونس تيم وراح يكون عندك اوبريشن تيم اللي هم السوك اوبريشن تيم اللي هم لاير 1 لاير 2 لاير 3 هلا بنيجي للعنصر الثالث واللي هو يعني بمفهومنا العام انه السوك هو عباره عن سم، السوك ليس سم. السم هو جزء صغير اساسي من السوك من السكيورتي اوبريشن سنتر. والسم سوليوشن حاليا النكست جينيريشن من السم سوليوشن مثل ما حضراتكم ما بعرف اذا بتتابعوا بكيو رادار لوغاريثم هاي البيست براند حاليا سبلانك اكزابيم ذي دونت هاف جاست اونلي لوج كوليكشن اند كوريليشن ناو ذي هاف ا يوزر اند انتيتي بيهافير اناليست سيستم اند انسيدنت ريسبونس سيستم ذاتس مين بالسوك Operation center, you should have two mechanisms to deal with the incident. First one, 
لازم يكون في عندك الانسيدنت ريسبونس سيستم اوتوماتيكلي تو ديل اوتوماتيكلي وذ ذا انسيدنت ذا اذر وان انسيدنت ريسبونس تيم انسيدنت ريسبونس تيم they have to investigate they have to know all the details and the track and track the footprint of the of the hacker finally this is the approach of hybrid solution that most of customer now متجهين له بشكل اساسي اللي هم عم باخذ السم as a service او security center as a service هلا حاليا في بعض الجهات مثل الجهات الحكوميه والجهات البنوك ما بتقدر انه تطلع الداتا اللي عندها لبرا بس في بعض الحالات كسكيورتي سيستم اذا ما في مقدره حاليه لتاسيس سكيورتي اوبريشن سنتر او رح تحتاج وقت كثير كبير لتاسيسه واللي بده ياسس سكيورتي اوبريشن سنتر حياخذ وقت كثير كبير لتاسيسه ففي هذا الوقت اللي هو وقت التاسيس دائما بننصح الكستمر انه يروح لهيك سوليوشن يروح لسوليوشن انه في سكيورتي او ديفنس سنتر كان هاندل ذا اوبريشن اوف سكيورتي ذاتس ات كواليتي نت اند Let's talk about the quality net strategic partner with uh, a quadron, quadron, an international company to provide total cyber security solution in Kuwait, and has su successfully begun implementing cyber security solution. Actually, quadron's Hungarian company. This is the quadron cyber security. Portfolio. And thank you. And if you have any question, Shukran, Mr. Shadi. Tfadal. Da had fi soal. Tfadal. But the speaker. Any question? You can. Thank you so much for your presentation. Actually. I will say something now. It's not only for, for your lecture, but in general. Actually, a few days back, I saw a very shocking video, which makes me sad all, all day. And before that, I saw something else about the same, but it makes me laugh. The first one, I saw people walking and looking into the mobile, and some of them felt in a pit. This makes me laugh. But when I saw the other video, video, a father hand in hand with his son trying to cross the street, and his son just walk and run away, trying to cross the street. Father run after him to save him. Both were killed by another car. My request to you, Microsoft, any other company, please. You are talking about safety information, security and information. Please start to think about the safety of people, the security of people. Try to create a system that can alarm people when they are walking in the street to alarm them, please, you are crossing the road. Linked by, to the GPS, or something else, mm -hmm. first. Second, you're talking about cyber insurance, cyber security, yes. and digital transformation. In this big world of IT, yes. there is a say. It says whatever you import about security system, you are not secured 100%. Yes. Unless you do your system locally by your hand and put the security factor. Can you elaborate on this? Thank you. Thank you. 
this is not the point that you have to implement your own system by yourself. We are talking about monitoring your system, about knowing what is happening internal in your network in real time. Because the behavior of for any attacks, the behavior, the normal behavior for any attacks or for any hackers to stay more than at least six months quietly in the network. In this session for Security Operations Center, it's the, not a trend, it's an obligation to secure yourself. Because as you said, that there is no one 100% is protected, is secure. Actually, there is no one is secure. If you are targeted, you will hack. If you are targeted, you will hack. So, the, the session that I have presented, it's about monitoring, about real time, about minimizing the risk, mitigating the risk, because you, ca you can lose, for example, $100, but you cannot lose $100,000. This is the concept. And about the security and, and the safety of the information, we have another session tomorrow to talk about the latest cybersecurity attacks that the people facing now and how you can protect yourself and how you can protect your personal data and your customer data. Thank you. Okay. What? About the first question he's asking about. About the security? No, repeat, repeat question. Please. I urge, I urge, it's a humanitarian request if you accept it. I urge the, the people of IT, Microsoft, any other one, to create a system to save life. Mm -hmm. this, the example which I gave you about the crossing the road. About the video. Ah, yes. Can you, can you just provide a system that save lives and give a signal that you are in danger before crossing the road? Actually, we are as a cybersecurity consultation, we are not providing like these services. I'm so sorry, but in, in general, there is a lot of, of companies or a lot of firms over the world, they are trying to create like these systems. And as you see, the, the last system, it's on in, in the iPhone platform and Android platform that you have an emergency system can track your status, your health, can track your even your, your blood pressure and others. But we are here to talk about the cybersecurity concept. Yeah, uh, I think I understand what you uh, mentioned, and I think uh, you raised up a good <laughs> things, but there is some companies, yeah, yeah, there is some companies, yeah, and they are, and we are not داخلية. واحنا طبعا عندنا اهم شيء في الاداره العامه للاطفاء وشعارنا اللي هو حمايه الارواح والممتلكات الارواح قبل الممتلكات وفعلا كلامك يعني صحيح بس في شركات مثل ما تفضل اخوي شادي يمكن متخصصه في عمليه السوفت وير وبالفعل انت اللي تتكلم